Hi, I'm John Biggs, and this is TechCrunch Makers. So we're here in Santa Clara, California. I'm here with Terrence Tang of Element Cases, and we're in your fabricator, which is KFab out here. So these guys build this amazing little case for the iPhone. It's called the Ronin, and it uses nickel-plated aluminum and wood to essentially encase the sides of the iPhone. And you also have carbon fiber on the front and back. But what's most important is this is the place where all this is made, right, Terrence? That's correct. And how long does one of these take from start to finish? It takes about an hour all right. to do one case. So let's go from beginning to end, I guess. So let's, we have all the parts here, and we can look at all the machines that, are, uh, that we use, correct? That's correct. All right. This is one of the first operations that we do, and this is for the power button. We start off from a bar stock of aluminum, gets fed into the machine, where the first operation of uh, profiling the power button is done. The uh, first operation is just profiling the button. Um, it goes into this fixture, and then the whole backside will be machined off, and then you're left with Something the, tiny the power like button. So now let's take a look at the, how the wood is put together. What's really unique about the Ronin case is uh, it's one of our first cases that we're trying to utilize uh, wood with our aluminum cases. Left and right side rails are all made out of wood. It's a special South American wood called Zercote. So one of the issues with uh, machining wood, obviously, uh, it's traditionally it's not machined. We have to find out solutions on how to work with this type of material. So these are the different stages that this wood goes through, is that correct? That's correct. So you have sort of a partially unfinished piece that moves into, here's a partially unfinished piece, moves into something a little more specific. And you do a lot of hand work on the wood to get it smooth, or what's the, what's the process after? Pretty much, pretty much right off the machine, um, the wood is pretty much almost there. Uh, the only thing that we do um, after this is we'll cure it, we'll put some, uh, we'll put some uh, hand rub oil finish on it, um, and that helps protect uh, the pores and whatnot of the wood. And then after that, it goes into pretty much assembly. So pretty much uh, the wood part is straight off the machine is ready. Okay. All right, so let's look at the top and bottom, which are these nickel-plated aluminum pieces here. So these are your secret plans for making essentially these, which are machined the same way as the uh, power buttons? That's, that's pretty much correct. So we all start off with bar stock aluminum. We have a top and a right side of the case. So that's our top side. This is our bottom side where the connector ports go into. Um, here at KFAB, we go and uh, make sure that all the parts are color coded so we know exactly which fixtures it will go into. This will go back into the fixture, and then the back sides will get machined off and finished for the final operation. After it comes off the machine, um, there is a handy brain, so it's very time consuming. Um, and after that, depending on what type of finish we want on it, uh, we'll go to the extent of uh, polishing these all up all by hand before it goes to uh, an our anodizer or uh, any type of other plating that we use. All right. So right now what we're looking at, we're looking at uh, the, the major controls for the Ronin case, which is uh, the volume up and down and the mute switch. So these are the little mute and volume switch buttons. And I think these pieces are the most fun. They look a little bit like you could probably ingest these, right? <laughs> you wouldn't want to, but yeah. yeah. Eventually they'll come out. Little small part, all for a iPhone case. Some of our uh, clients overseas, they purchase pretty much every single one of our cases that we release. And we, we really want to go cater to, uh, you know, different lifestyles and so for our customers. And, um, you know, we keep on top of uh, innovation by coming out with limited edition cases. So you have Element really Case appeals. fanboys who just go from case to case and just put on the new one, right? We do. We have customers that will buy every single case that we produce. So a lot of people compare iPhone cases and the soft goods industry sort of to the fashion industry, where you still have the problem counterfeiting and people can do it fairly quickly and easily. As soon as your fall line comes out, mm -hmm. they can copy that and send it over. Mm -hmm. have, have you, are you planning on any uh, litigation or you just let it fly, I guess? I think especially when you talk about uh, 
It's about the manufacturers in Asia that does all the counterfeiting. You'll never be able to stop them. They copy our entire packaging all the way down to any misspellings that we may have. I think the only thing you can do as a, as a U.S. company is to just keep improving your designs and uh, just constantly change. So we saw how all the parts were made, but now this is quality control. These uh, $200,000 machines are where everything is, you assure that everything fits, is that right? Correct. Okay, you're Kevin with KFAB, right. and you're in charge of making sure that these things are pretty. Absolutely. So what happens in this room? So in this room, we are entirely responsible for making sure that all of the parts that we're producing for Element Case are uh, conforming to their specifications as well as being uh, in their pristine cosmetic requirements. So every single piece that comes through here is tested and measured? Yes. So that takes a little bit of what? Well, bit of it's done on a sampling basis, and we work with those requirements ahead of time, but we definitely make sure that uh, it's robust enough to ensure that all the parts that they deliver uh, top notch. And what could happen really with a piece that comes off a CNC machine? Could it be there's some, that those machines are fairly quick and fairly powerful? Mm -hmm. Is there some way it could slip, or is there? Is there... No, the machines are quite repeatable, actually. Um, they do a pretty nice job if there's going to be any error. It's, error, it's usually human error, and we catch those kinds of things mm -hmm. pretty quickly. So uh, we make sure that we uh, catch all of that stuff in here. All right. And why did you guys choose KFAB? Uh, it looks like you're basically making everything in America, which is, I suppose, one of your primary goals. But why KFAB specifically? Why didn't you buy a bunch of huge machines and do it in your, in your basement? Well, Element K started off you know, in a garage, and um, as we slowly um, grew, you know, we, our needs grew. Um, you know, so starting off with small machine shops, you know, just couldn't meet our demand for production, high volume production. Um, when we looked at KFAB, they are definitely capable of doing high production as well as, you know, having this, this massively important uh, test equipment which measures all the quality. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, all Element Case products, you know, have pretty much, you know, there's, they sell because of the quality that we put into it. And what's the one thing you guys have learned in making these things? They're obviously highly, highly machined. There are a lot of steps putting go into making one of these cases. What's something that you've taken away so far in building these things? Is there something that you've learned specifically? Um, pretty much learn not to cut in any part of quality. Um, every single part is inspected, um, especially if, you know when when parts come from KFAB over to Element Case, we do full inspection every single part. We do not do any batch checking at all. So uh, they, any customer who purchases our cases, they can be guaranteed that their uh, their case has been completely inspected by a single person. All right. So what's next for for Element Case, like rhino horn or <laughs> tusks? Well, as part of uh, product development, you know, I've been experimenting with uh, all different types of materials and Human different types bones. of finishes. <laughs> mastodon. Yeah, mastodon. <laughs> Fossils. Fossilized uh, material. Yeah. Yeah. All right, perfect. Exotics, titaniums, and whatnot. So. All right, great. Thanks a lot, Terrence. Thanks a lot, Kevin. It's been a fascinating tour. I'm John Biggs with TechCrunch Makers. Thanks for watching.